a humble request, inshallah, before you begin. I would request the brothers, if it's possible, and we are not uh, finding comfort, if we can just scoot a bit forward, so the people who come after us will not have to jump over us and go around us. It makes it easier, inshallah. May Allah bless you all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar Ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah Ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الحمد لله الذي أرسل إلى كافة الناس بشيرا ونذيرا وداعيا إلى الله بإذنه وسراجا منيرا فبشر وأنذر ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له جل وعلا رب الأرباب ومسبب الأسباب ونشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا مولانا محمدا عبد الله ورسوله بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة فجزاه الله عنا وعن كل المسلمين خيرا اللهم فصلي وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد رب يسر ولا تعسر وتمم بالخير وبك نستعين يا فتاح رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل لقطة من لسان يفقه قولي رب زدني علما والحقني بالصالحين سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم سبحانك لا فهم لنا إلا ما فهمتنا إنك أنت الجواد الكريم My dear respected elders, brothers and sisters in Islam When we go back into history we can recall that it all began from a very disturbing glance. Whenever people saw us, they would stare us down. And then it moved on to whispers. I think he's a Muslim. And then it moved to ridicule. They would ask you, what's your name? And you'd say, Abdurrahman. And they say, ramen noodles, what? And then it came out. And it was clear. We hate you. I hate you. My people hate you. And so we have been in this dilemma for so long. And we couldn't pinpoint why certain people hate us. For we are emotional people. The Muslim Ummah are emotional people. We tend to jump the gun. And we tend to draw, to draw premature conclusions. Well, maybe it's because I'm different. So let me change my name. Maybe because I'm different. Let me stop practicing in the open. Maybe because it's different, I'll celebrate Christmas. Maybe because I'm different, and so on and so forth. So we tried time and time again to assimilate, to blend in, 
only so we wouldn't stand out, so that we could be pointed out. But occasion after occasion has made it clear to us that we failed. But never did we stop and ask the simple question, what is the need for me to change who I am? Let us point out two facts at this moment. There has and there always will be people who hate you. It's part of life. Not because of any specific reason that's common across the board. You will be hated. As you will be liked, loved, admired. But regardless how people feel about you, shouldn't be a call for you to question it and draw the conclusion it's because I am different and feel the need that you have to change yourselves for that. For I ask you a simple question. Since when has being different been categorized as a crime. If you're different, is it a crime? If you're different, is it a sin? If you're different, is that something wrong? When we say something different, we consider it like a, a smudge on, on a windshield, a smear on a plate, or a spot on a white sheet. Something that stands out, it's noticeable, and it's disliked. But recall something, my dear friends. Islam came to bring different. Islam came to bring something different from the prevailing trend of that time. The Quran was different. For at that time, laws were presented to a people who were accustomed to lawlessness. And the Prophet ﷺ came down as different, contrary to the inhumane customs which prevailed in society in those days. So, oh my fellow Muslims, you are different. And you will remain different. And whatever you try to do will not change who you are because you are to be different. Hence, being different isn't a bad thing across the board. For many times, when goodness came and change occurred, it happened by someone or something that called for something different. I want to highlight 10 points today. And these points will remind myself and us all that how being different empowered humanity, brought forth solution for humanity, affirmed peace and stability for the entire humanity. And it all began from acknowledging and accepting that I am different. And on each of these points, we need to ask ourselves, how is being different a crime? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Bayina, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Lam Yakun Ladina Kafaru min Ahlil Kitabi Wal Mushrikina Munfakina Hatta Tatiahumul Bayina. People were on a trend of harmony. Everything was fine. But when something was brought forth to them, the bayina, the truth, the dalil, it brought forth rift. It brought forth change. People split. People disputed. Why? Because something was given to them. Some accepted, some didn't. The first thing that Islam gave to us all that differentiated us from the rest is something that we all know as Tawheed. Tawheed is the acknowledgement of the oneness of Allah. Now when we talk about Tawheed, we're like, you know what, that's, that, that's children's stuff. You know, you teach them to them on Sunday school. Let me tell you all something. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wasn't introduced at the time of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa The mushrikeen acknowledged Allah. They knew Allah, but they knew many associated with Allah. They called on to Allah, but they called on to others to get to Allah. When we acknowledged and adopted the monotheistic faith and put aside polytheism and adultery, it wasn't just to reaffirm that there's one Allah. Yes, that's a big part of it. But it was also to introduce into society something which was void. For too long, people went to Lat and Uzza and all the other gods, the god of the sun, the god of the moon, the god of the, uh, of the clouds, the god of the rain. They went to all the gods that you could talk about. And all they did was ask, ask, ask. And all they wanted in return was to get, to get, to get. But you know what there wasn't? Accountability. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala introduced himself to us through the Holy Quran, he told us that he's Razzaq, he's Fattah, he's Alim, he's Qabid, he's Basit. He's the one who does everything. He will give you what you want. But remember, inna yawm al-fasli kana miqata. There's a day coming. You could do what you want. You could take from me and acknowledge this from me. You could take from me and say, you did it. Good for you. Do what you want. But I'm going to hold you accountable. So what Tawheed brought forth into a society that didn't acknowledge what accountability was, was the sense of accountability. That when you understand that you're accountable to Allah, then you recognize you're accountable to your peers, you're accountable to your parents, you're accountable to one another, your children and everyone in the society, you acknowledge that you're accountable to the law. There is a system and the system began in Islam through Tawheed, acknowledgement of accountability. So ask yourself, if Tawheed didn't come, and if people didn't acknowledge this, we would have been the same. But this brought forth different. It brought forth something that was different. And it changed society to a path of betterness. Ask yourself, is being different a crime? This led those Sahabas. There's a Sahabi. Allah, Abu Abdurrahman Farooq radiallahu ta'ala. He was sent to Khurasan from Rasulullah Sallallahu for 27 years to teach Islam. And he left his wife, Ummi Rabah, Ummi Rabia radiallahu ta'ala anha, when she was pregnant with 13, sorry, with 30,000 gold coins. And he said to her, I'm going, I entrust this to you. I don't know if I'm going to come back. But if I come back, I'm just going to inquire from you what you did with this. I pray that we have a baby and you use this to raise our child. He said after 27 years, he's coming back to Medina Munawwara. There's no more Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The masjid has changed. The city has changed. And he enters the masjid and he doesn't acknowledge and recognize anyone. And then he sees a group of people surrounding this individual. He inquires from the people around him, who's that person? And they say, that's Imam Abu Uthman, Rabi al-Rai, rahimahullah. One of the greatest Imams in Islam, an educator, a teacher, a scholar. He said, you don't know him? That's who it is. So he started crying. He said, I wish I stayed and I had a child. And it was a son, and I raised him. I could have made him into that person. After a prayer concluded, he's going home. And this same imam is coming his direction. And they both stop at the same door. They inquire from each other, where are you going? He goes, I'm going home. Where are you going? I'm going home. Where's your home? This one. He goes, no, that's my home. They're having a discussion. And the mom opens the door. She smiles and says, oh, my son, that is your father. He's coming back after 27 years. And then he enters the house, he has a dinner. The next day he asks his wife. His wife asked him, will you not ask me about those 30,000 gold coins you gave to me? Accountability. 
acknowledgement of accountability. He goes, no, wallahi, if there was 300,000, I'll never ask you because I see what you did. I couldn't have done better. So Tawheed brought the sense and realization that you have to be accountable. Number two, what Islam brought forth to the world was internal and external cleanliness in order for us to be efficient, productive, and resourceful. Rasulullah Sallallahu taught us that tahara is shatrul iman. Purity is half your faith. Allah subhanahu wa talks about internal purity in the verses of the Quran like in Surah Baqarah Wallahu yuhibbul muttahirin And Allah subhanahu wa speaks about external purity Inna Allah yuhibbul tawabin wa yuhibbul mutatahirin That Allah loves the people of purity Why was this introduced? It was introduced in a time when people didn't believe in sanity they didn't believe in cleanliness. They didn't believe that being clean is part of being civilized. We know our history. What was Medina Munawwara before Rasulullah Sallallahu It was Yathrib. It was a land that was plague infested. Islam brought forth guidelines. You got to be different in order to make a difference. Ask yourself, is being different a crime? Number three. At a time when there was no acknowledgement of status, whose mother, whose father, whose elder, whose youngster, whose scholar, who's a poor, an orphan, a widow, Rasulullah is now saying, Whoever doesn't have mercy on the young ones, respect and honor the elders. And honor our scholars is not from us. Allah subhanahu wa says, You have to learn to honor people at a time when there was no such thing as honor. It was something different. It was brought on onto a society that didn't know it. But it came as something different and it truly made a difference. Ask yourself, is being different a crime? Number four, respect. In Surah Nisa, the chapter of the women, Allah subhanahu wa ta is addressing the norm of society where women were like a commodity. Sleep with who you want, do what you want, go with who you want. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, These verses Allah is saying is haram for you to marry your mother, your sister, your daughter. Why is he saying this? Because this was the norm. And Allah brought Islam to bring about change and that change occurred when people accepted the different path and they made a difference. Ask yourself, is it a cry? Number five, love. In a selfish world, Rasulullah Sallallahu is teaching, لا يؤمن أحدكم. You cannot be a believer. حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه. Until you love for your brother what you love for yourself. This is now changing the ball game. It's bringing in you understanding. It is purifying you. It is broadening your horizon of understanding of how the world should be. And now it's teaching you to become selfless. Number one was through love. That love took them towards number six. Feeding the needy. وَيُطْعِمُونَ الطَّعَامَ عَلَىٰ حُبِّهِ مِسْكِينًا وَيَتِيمًا وَأَسِيرًا they went out and they looked for the miskeen, the orphan, and the asir. What's an asir? Asir is a prisoner. Asir is someone who has been, who committed a crime and who served time. In our ummah today also, if someone says, I just come out of our incarceration, we stand 10 steps away from them. We say, wa alaykum salam. 
And Quran is saying, go feed them, sit with them, treat them kindly, because kindness doesn't stop at the door of a prisoner. Kindness doesn't stop on the door of an orphan. Kindness does not stop on the door of a destitute person. We're doing this not for show or fame, we're doing this for Allah. We don't want nothing from you. Rasulullah said, you're not a believer if you go to sleep full and your neighbor is hungry. Number seven, now that they are loving one another, feeding one another, they are prioritizing others above themselves. They brought faith before. They prioritized them to the extent that when they had a desperate need for themselves, they said no to themselves and they said yes to the others. There once was a person who came to Rasulullah and said, I am your guest. Rasulullah asked the Sahaba, who will host our guest today, tonight? Sahabi said, I will. When we are asked for Allah, we look at our situation first. He said, I will. He went home and he inquired from his wife, is there anything? She said, no, there's only enough for the children. He said, put them to sleep. Put them to sleep, hungry. And get the food ready. And we're going to make a plan here. Huh? The plan wasn't to cheat Allah. The plan was to be sincere to the path of change by being different. He said, you're going to cook the food, you're going to present it. And we're going to sit down. And we're going to, all, we're going to by mistake, turn off the kerosene lamp. And we're going to allow our guests to eat while we will enact eating. We're not going to eat. Was the result, the revelation that came down because that act of selfishness, selflessness. Then the Quran said, in order for you to continue on the path of being different and bringing forth change, you cannot hold back anything which is good to you. You give. What you love. A sahabi came to Rasulullah Sallallahu He said, Ya Rasulullah, this is my well, birha. You like it. You love it. I always see you coming to the garden, sitting there. I want to give it to you. Rasulullah Sallallahu said, no. He goes, no, I have to. Because Allah said, I cannot reach the pinnacle of piety until I give from what I love. Rasulullah Sallallahu said, give it to your family members. You'll get double the reward. One for the giving and one for joining the ties of blood. And then, number nine. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is now addressing at a time when people used to kill their enemy and drink from their skulls. At a time when Wahshi is eating the liver of the uncle of Rasulullah sallallahu At a time when there was no criteria as to what should be a healthy diet. And permissible by Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then said that in order for you to maintain your sanity and stability of your connection with your Allah, you're gonna now stand out different in your food. Allah mentioned all the manners of how they used to kill or what they used to eat. Something was found dead in Florida till you see vultures. In those days, people would just sit around and eat it. Allah said, ذَلِكُمْ fisk. It's wrong. And in this verse, I want to highlight this last point. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this same verse adds that verse which was revealed at the time of Asr in Arafat to Rasulullah sallallahu in Hajjatul Wada. Al yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum. Today I have completed your religion. I am pleased that uh, this Islam is your way. You have taken the steps up the ladder. You have defined yourself as different in society. Because that's exactly what Islam was to do. To make you different. 
So when you fear that people hate you for your differences and for standing out being different, you're wrong. You're supposed to be different. What they despise us for is that we're not giving them through our differences what we were supposed to give to them. Allah is saying, when you will do this, I have perfected your religion for you. So let us pause and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not that we become someone else, but we become that person that Allah made us to be. That we don't go hide when people get mad. We don't go hibernate when the hate rises. But we stand up. And we show what Islam is all about. We let people know the beauty of Islam because every Muslim has been given the tools through which the predicaments and problems of a world that's breaking can be resolved. It happened 1400 years ago and it can happen today. أقول قولي هذا أستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروا من كل ذنب إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. أستغفر الله لذي لا إله إلا الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأن محمد عبده ورسوله. My dear brothers and sisters, last but not least, number ten. Once we understand that Islam didn't come down to make our lives difficult, that the Quran did not come down to make us look like a low class in society. And the sunnah of Rasulullah his life was not given to us so that we are deprived from the goodness that the people of the world can indulge in. Change our mindset. And then embrace the final point, which is become a source of goodness for others. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran regarding you and I, and everyone who came from da- who came to this world from the time of Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq is kuntum khayra ummatin O Muslims all those who have been given the solutions for the problems all those who have been given the complete kit of how to patch up and repair and rectify this world Kuntum khayra ummah. You're the best of this ummah. You're the best of humanity. Why? Ukhrijat lin nas. You have been taken out for the benefit of humanity. So when we say we came to America because there's opportunity, or because I had a degree, or because I had money, or because I wanted to live the dream, don't fool yourself. You came for whatever reason, but Allah brought you here so that your life can be an example so that your actions can exemplify what it means to be civil. That's why Rasulullah said, people will come and they will break you, you join them. Silman qata'ak. People will come and accuse you and they'll hurt you. Wa'fu amman zalamak. You forgive them. But remember, wa ahsin ila man ilayk. Your duty of the religion is to do good to those who are doing evil. Don't fall in that trap. You have been taken out for the benefit of humanity. That's why the Sahaba, radiallahu anhum ajma'een, when they traveled the earth and they stepped foot into the courts of the biggest kings of the world, and the kings would sit down on their thrones and say, why have you come to me? What is your need? And they would say, inna Allah abta'athana. We haven't come to you. Allah sent us to you. Allah sent me to you. Allah has sent you here. Allah has sent us here in Florida so that we can work on the image of Islam that's become so tainted that every person is saying Islam is evil. This is not their fault. This is my fault. This is because I'm not fulfilling my duty. I'm not climbing the ladder. And if I can't climb the ladder, I can't be the resource of ukhrijat lin nas. So remember, maybe your distinction as different remains because your effect on this earth is awaited. And until or unless we accept this and bring forth the good which is needed, which is the call of the moment, 
we individually and collectively, Muslims and non-Muslims cannot prosper. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted us a path when humanity was in the depths of darkness and gave us a beacon of light. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to acknowledge it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to embrace it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to accept it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to live by it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu Sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma fasalli wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad Abdika wa rasulika al nabi al-ummi Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa baraka wa sallama tasliman Kathiran kathira Allahumma aghfir lana dhunubana Allahumma aghfir lana ذنوبنا وإسرافنا في أمرنا وثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعا وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابا اللهم ألف بين قلوبنا وأصلح ذات بيننا واهدنا سبل السلام وجنبنا الفواحش ما ظهر منها وما بطن اللهم إنا نسألك العفو العافية والمعافاة الدائمة في ديننا ودنيانا وآخرتنا نسألك اللهم من الخير كله عاجله وآجله ونعوذ بك الله من الشر كله عاجله وآجله اللهم عنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك آمين يا رب العالمين آمين يا رب العالمين آمين يا رب العالمين إن الله أمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء وال منكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم ودعوه يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله